I'm Alex. I'm an engineer at Garnix. Uh, if you need uh, CI or hosting for your next Nix project, you should check us out. But today I want to talk about an uh, open source project that I've been working on called JailNix. Um, so supply chain attacks are scary. Uh, there's obviously the big XE attack last year, but I feel like every other week I'm reading about some new supply chain attack that's <laughs> come out that's a little less low, pro a little more low profile. Um, and for that reason, I like to run all the software I can in Kimu VMs and Bubble Wrap Jails. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Bubble Wrap, it's the sandboxing tool at the core of Flatpak. Um, so if you're running Flatpak apps, then you have the sandboxing tool built in, but I think it still makes sense to run Bubble Wrap outside of Flatpak if you want more control over the permissions that your software runs with, or if you're sandboxing CLI tools, which Flatpak doesn't seem to have a good answer for. Um, so Bubble Wrap is, I think, pretty easy to use. It runs software in a Linux user namespace that's initially empty by default, but it can be populated by uh, some flags that are fairly straightforward. Um, but uh, Bubble Wrap is designed to be a very uh, low-level tool, and I found that um, it's kind of tedious to, to, um, to wrap the uh, software correctly. So here's an example from ArchWiki of uh, jailing Firefox. And this is only about a third of the flags. I had to cut the rest uh, just to fit on the slide. Um, and I found that as things got more tedious, I was less likely to jail them. Uh, so I wrote this Nix function uh, that takes in a name, a package to wrap, and then a list of high-level permissions that I want the uh, software to run with. So for example, run Firefox, give it access to the network, be able to draw windows to the screen, and then read write directories. Uh, and um, this uh, function returns a derivation that outputs a bash uh, script with all the bubble wrap args uh, populated. Um, now this is obviously not a panacea. Uh, there's still systemd, core utils, bash, and bubble wrap itself that remain unjailed. But I try and, uh, I think it's my goal to try and wrap as much software as I can, e even if it's uh, not all. Um, all, all jailed. Uh, so at the core of JailNix uh, are these combinators that we kind of talked about a little bit. Um, and I want to talk about a little bit about some of the combinators that I wrote. Um, so there's some simple ones that more or less map directly to bubble wrap args, like read, write, read only, tempfs. But there's some higher level ones uh, that give you access to specific resources, like network, or pulse audio, or pipe wire, or your Wayland compositor, or your GPU, or uh, your v4l2 Linux uh, devices like webcams. Um, there's some combinators that give you access to any uh, argv paths that, that are valid file paths. So this is useful if you have an editor or a PDF re uh, reader or a media player or something like that. Um, there's a dbus combinator that uses XGG dbus proxy under the hood uh, to give you a sandbox dbus uh, socket in case your software needs that. Um, there's a get a jail to host channel combinator that exposes a program inside the jail uh, that runs a script on the outside of the jail. Um, this is useful if you want to expose just certain permissions. Um, so for example, uh, this exposes a program inside the jail called get host file size that allows the jailed app to read uh, file sizes of files on the outside of the jail without giving it full file uh, access to, to your whole file system. Um, and one example of using that is in the open URLs and browser combinator, which exposes a dollar browser inside the jail that forwards URLs to your dollar browser outside the jail, even if your browser needs more permissions than your jailed application. Um, and then there's also a bind next door uh, closure combinator that uses a combination of runtime and build time logic to figure out uh, what your next door closure that your, your app needs. Um, and this, one, this, one, this one's enabled, and it binds those, those paths in. And this one's enabled by default, um, but alternatively, you can disable that and uh, just bind your whole next door if you don't have secrets in your next door. Um, and there's, there's a lot more. Uh, I've kind of gone through and tried to document as many as I could, and um, they're on this, this website here. Um, uh, the, the last point I want to make is that you can use JailNix as an overlay, so you don't have to uh, call this jail function directly in your system, you know, in your list of system packages, and then all use cases of that uh, of those jail packages will be jailed. You can also be explicit about it by using the .jailed variant, or if you want access to the unjailed one, you can use the unjailed. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, probably no time for questions, but uh, if you want to pair, I'm around, and uh, I'd love to chat if you have any ideas. Thank you.